Saudi Arabia carries out the execution of a high-profile Shia cleric, sparking outrage and inflaming long-simmering tensions with Iran. Iran protests outside the Saudi embassy in Tehran. Saudi Arabia severs diplomatic ties. Is it a sectarian divide between regional powers or a fight for dominance? To help us answer that, CCTV's Nathan King joins us now with the latest. Nathan, uh, we have something of a diplomatic standoff right now. What's the latest? Yeah, well, it's not going away, Anna. And in fact, in the last few hours, we've seen Iran actually accuse Saudi Arabia of hitting its embassy in Yemen, whereas there is something of a proxy conflict, as we know, going on. This, of course, counters the fact that uh, Iranians stormed the Saudi embassy in Tehran. Iran also saying it will cut off all exports to Saudi Arabia and ban its citizens from attending uh, the yearly Hajj. Now, remember, millions of Iranians go to the Islamic uh, holy sites in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia had actually said uh, that Iranians would still be welcome despite the cutting of ties. So the, the tit for tat uh, does continue uh, between the two countries. Although it must be said that Tehran was a little bit surprised about the reaction uh, to the Saudi Arabi uh, Arabian embassy attacks. Uh, it is promising a full investigation. There's a lot of hand wringing going on inside Iran about how that got out of control. So there are some moves to try and uh, dampen down the tensions as well, but it shows no signs of going away. Now, of course, Nathan, a number of countries have lined up behind Saudi Arabia in this dispute, most of them Sunni countries in the Middle East and also a few countries in Africa as well. What kind of impact is that having on Iran? Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We saw Kuwait, we've seen uh, Hatta recently, we've seen others uh, uh, sever or at least downgrade uh, diplomatic ties. Um, you know, it's generally a split between Sunni Muslim countries, as you said, uh, supporting Saudi Arabia. What's interesting, though, is that Saudi allies like Pakistan have not done that. In fact, they've actually offered to mediate. Turkey, uh, of course, and the bridge between the Middle East, uh, allies in both countries, wants to mediate as well. Russia has offered to uh, as well. But, yeah, it's very much uh, a split between uh, the Middle East here, between Sunni uh, and Shia countries, and it doesn't show any signs of mitigating just yet. And, Nathan, uh, of course, the Middle East is a volatile place. We've got the crisis in Syria. We've got the violence that's taking place in Yemen. How is that, you know, efforts are being made to resolve those crises. How is that going to be affected by the tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran? You're absolutely right about Syria. And, of course, Saudi Arabia and uh, Iran on opposite sides, really, in, in that conflict. The UN's envoy uh, for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, actually said that he's had assurances from both countries that the Syria peace talks, which, of course, uh, is a big success, uh, for the UN and the international community after nearly five years of civil war will go forward. Although there's a lot of nervousness, though, that those words from both capitals may not translate into uh, actual actions considering uh, the tensions as well. And, of course, Yemen uh, is a stalemate. We've had the Iranians accuse the Saudi of hitting their embassy, uh, very much on different sides of, of, that, of that conflict, a proxy war there as well. Uh, so it doesn't bode well going forward. Thanks, Nathan. That's CCTV's Nathan King reporting. Thank you. For The View from Saudi Arabia, former Saudi Navy Commodore Abdul Latif al mohim joins us from Bahrain. And for the Iranian perspective, Hamid Reza Ghulamzadeh joins us from Tehran. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Abdul Latif, these tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran were triggered off by the execution of a leading Shia cleric in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Saudis must have recognized that this would cause tensions to rise between the two countries if this cleric was executed. So why was this action carried out at this time? Well, uh, it, it, uh, first of all, good evening uh, from, uh, from Bahrain. But uh, uh, carrying the action at this time has no significance to the timing. It, it, just, it just happened to be happening at this time. But uh, we did expect um, Iran to, to react because he is technically a... Uh, um, remote control, uh, for, you know, controlled by the Iranians. So uh, the timing is no significance in Saudi Arabia to, regarding the execution of uh, Nimr and Nimr. Hamid, what do you make of that? Was this cleric, as Abdul Latif points out, controlled by Iran? Actually, unlike Mr. Abdul Latif, I think that the time frame of the incident is very important because, uh, as you know, the uh, execution was uh, carried out on the 
early January, everyone is busy all around the world with the New Year and its celebrations. And it was on Saturday, Sunday, let's say it's weekend, uh, where uh, many people are not uh, involved in news and they are not following news much and they are actually uh, not at work. And uh, of course, the situation in which he was executed, which was along with uh, a number of terrorists, is actually a point of uh, interest and a point of importance. And all of these, uh, to me, it seems that uh, the Saudi regime was trying to uh, set a frame for a, a propaganda against uh, Sheikh Nemer, by which he wanted to. Uh, they wanted to first execute him along with other terrorists to say that he was also a terrorist while he was a peaceful uh, protester. And on the other hand, they, were, they carried out on a time that not all the media and all the organizations could be following the news and uh, not much people and public opinions would be following the news and condemn that. Okay, Abdul Latif? No. Yeah, no, well, Nimr, Nimr was uh, in contact. Well, he had been in Iran since 1918. He stayed there for a very long time. And uh, ironically, ironically, uh, he was, he was uh, expelled from Iran. Some of his views didn't uh, get along with many mullahs in, in Iran, and he went to Syria. And when he, came, uh, when he left Syria, he came to Saudi Arabia, and he had been arrested uh, uh, more than once. But when he was just talking, the Saudi authorities have not uh, acted uh, against him or his family. As a matter of fact, his, his wife uh, you, uh, used to work with the, in the Saudi uh, uh, Ministry of Interior at the, in the uh, passport department. And when she got very, very sick, uh, Saudi government uh, uh, sent her to be treated at the best American hospitals in the United States. And, uh, we, and she got very ill, and she, she died in, in hospital. At the same time she was in the hospital, her three kids and many members of his family were uh, uh, given a free scholarship by the Saudi government going to schools in the United States. Uh, I'm talking about like full, full scholarship, health care, uh, tuition, everything. But what happened is that he started instigating uh, and, and forming small cells by uh, uh, some of his, uh, you know, young followers who actually started uh, uh, t uh, or took uh, to their hands the streets of, of their uh, little hometown and they and many officers from the Saudi Ministry of Interior were killed and they used the uh, Molotovs they, they they had guns and arms and uh, they simply terrorized the people so the Saudi government had no choice but to to arrest him but he resisted at, uh, arrest and uh, uh, there was a shoot uh, shooting between between him and and the police forces and he was injured during the the shootout and he was taken to the hospital and then treated at the same time, he was uh, fairly trialed, and it took very, very long time for him to be trialed. But it did happen that he was uh, trialed with uh, many terrorists who are Sunnis. So th th the trial doesn't have anything with, with, with the sect. Last thing is, yeah. Nimr and Nimr is not an Iranian uh, citizen. <laughs> Hamid, there of course has been, let me go to Hamid, there's been fierce reaction in Tehran to what has happened in Saudi Arabia, in fact, the Saudi embassy in Tehran was torched by demonstrators. I want you to take a listen to what the Saudi Arabian foreign minister had to say, and then I have a question. Let's watch this. I want to point out that the Iranian regime has a long record of violations of foreign diplomatic missions. Those include the occupation of the American embassy in 1979 and the attack on the British embassy in 2011, as well as yesterday's attack on the Saudi embassy in Tehran and its consulate in Mashhad. Such continuous attacks represent a flagrant violation of international agreements, charters, and treaties. These attacks are a continuation of the Iranian regime's aggressive policy in the region that aims to destabilize the region's security and stability and spread tensions and wars. Okay, Hamid, I just want to make the point there, we're listening there to the Saudi foreign minister, just want to make the point that the Iranian government did condemn the actions of those demonstrators in Tehran. But when we see what's going on in Tehran, doesn't it play into the hands of those who want to see a deterioration in the relationship between Iran and Saudi Arabia? You know, actually, everyone has been condemning the incident in, inside Tehran, in Tehran and also in Mashhad. The government has uh, strongly condemned that. The other uh, uh, bodies of the government have also uh, condemned the incident and many other officials and even public opinion has condemned the incident and it is something carried out by a, a few number of people who are radicals and it's not something that you can uh, associate with the government or any other bodies here inside Tehran. Uh, but the point is that a person is saying that whose country has uh, uh, 
actually whose supporters have uh, attacked Iranian emb embassy two years ago in Beirut and killed a number of people and guards there. And just yesterday, the Saudis have uh, bombarded the uh, Sana'a and uh, a missile hit, actually damaged the Iranian embassy in Sana'a. What happened in, in Tehran and in Mashhad was that people who were angry for the reasons of, uh, which I'm going to mention now, uh, 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 protested against the Saudis outside the uh, consulate and the embassy. And some people try to make it worse and, um, and set fire into the buildings. But the reason is that people are angry with, uh, with Saudi regime because uh, just a few months ago, uh, nearly 500 Iranians were killed during the Hajj because of misconduct mis 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 uh, of the Hajj uh, ceremony and Hajj rituals. Uh, while before that, two Iranian teenagers were, were assaulted in Jeddah airport by, by security forces there. And despite their promise to punish the uh, people who were involved, nothing has happened uh, so far. Right. And these are the reasons that uh, Iranians are very angry at the uh, Saudi regime. And because of that, such, things, such protests happened. But no one here in Iran has uh, ever approved of the uh, setting fire to the uh, building and damaging the building. Abdul Latif, there is a widespread belief that, well, uh, <laughs> I'll get to you in a moment on the other question, but there is a widespread belief that Saudi Arabia and Iran are engaged in some kind of sectarian proxy war. It's a war that pits followers of the Shia branch of Islam against those who are Sunnis. Is what we're seeing now just a manifestation of that proxy war? If you, if, you, if you look at the, the history of Iran, first of all, uh, look at the, uh, since 1979, after the toppling of the Shah of Iran, uh, so, uh, the, the Iranian regime was, threat, was threatening Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states constantly. And uh, just look at what they have done in Lebanon and Syria and, and Yemen, Iraq and, uh, and, and, and Bahrain, and what they are trying to do in, in the eastern part of Saudi Arabia. This will give you an indication. Also, uh, going, to the, to, going to the embassy, since when the uh, uh, Iranian regime has this democratic level where where uh, people instantly or uh, you know spontaneously would would, would attack a foreign uh, foreign embassy. I don't think uh, somebody would 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 get close to a foreign uh, uh, embassy in Tehran without without the consent of, of the of the Iranian uh, of the Iranian government. And if you look at uh, the the, uh, the the record of the Iranians concerning their outside outside activities concerning their assassinations and, and uh, the use of violence against uh, Iranian dissidents in, in, in Paris and the United States and, and in some Ara uh, Arab countries. Also during the Hajj of 19, uh, during the 80s when they, they smuggled uh, uh, C4 explosives to, to, disturb, uh, to disturb the Hajj. Iran has very, very uh, a long record of, 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 of terrorism. Even look, look, look at what they have done in, uh, in, in Lebanon during the 1980s when, when the American uh, forces were in, were in Lebanon. By the way, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I have a lot of Iranian friends. I want the relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran to be very, very stable. I want all neighboring countries in the Gulf states and the Arab world to be, to be very, very stable. The Arab, the Arab Spring is taking very, very long time uh, to, to actually dry out all the resources of, 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 the, uh, of the Arab world. We want peaceful uh, solutions to anything, but Iran is not, is not giving us a chance. Iran doesn't even have friends in the, in the international arena. And they, Iran is a country that cannot survive without an outside enemy. Okay, we, Hamid, Hamid, what we have seen now is that the diplomatic relationship between Saudi Arabia and Iran has been broken. We also see a number of countries, a lot of countries in the Gulf, some of the countries in Africa, now lining up behind Saudi Arabia, showing their support for Saudi Arabia. What kind of impact is this having on Iran? Actually, if I tell you that everyone here in Iran is happy with the uh, severing of ties with uh, Saudi Arabia and some other countries, you might be surprised. And actually, since the very moment that the Saudi foreign minister announced that they are cutting ties with Iran and a number of other countries followed that, many, many jokes and uh, humors are being made in, inside Iran, and no one actually is, is uh, worried about that. Uh, even if you consider that in terms of international uh, politics, 
uh, what I Iran is do doing right now in the region is following democracy and trying to uh, settle everything and ma make stabil stabilize the situation uh, in the region while Saudi Arabia is trying to worsen and de destabilize the region. What Iran is doing is working with the governments in Iraq and in Syria, a democratically elected uh, government in Syria, something I, I believe that uh, might be difficult to understand in Saudi Arabia because they have never had any, uh, an election there in the country. So uh, no surprise if they cannot uh, understand that Assad is elected by votes and it is popular votes. So uh, what is going to happen is that Iran is going to continue its support based on the democracy and the logics and rational behavior, but the one who is uh, trying to help itself out of the situation right now is Saudi Arabia, uh, who has been trying to destabilize the region and to f uh, follow its own interests in the region by uh, weakening uh, Assad's government and also the situation in uh, Iraq. Uh, I don't believe that the situation in, in uh, either of these countries in the region is a sectarian issue. It is just a political issue in which Saudi Arabia is trying to increase its dominance in the region and its influence in the region. You look at Yemen, uh, where Saudis are uh, uh, bombarding the p civilian people and the women and innocent children there for more than 10 months from now uh, just to uh, get, get a cash on the Bab al-Mandab and now with Djibouti they are working with Djibouti to have other, another uh, influence okay. there in the region uh, in that strategic actually region. Abdul Latif okay. we can see the danger here that you know this uh, dispute between Iran and Saudi Arabia could spill over, could have effects on attempts to find peace in Syria. But is there a danger here that this could spiral out of control and perhaps, perhaps lead to a military confrontation? It, well, f first of all, we, 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 don't ho we, we hope it doesn't escalate. We hope it doesn't escalate. Uh, but uh, let me t t say two po a couple of points. First of all, I Iran has the highest number of, of uh, uh, of people being uh, being put uh, to the death, de death penalty. Second thing, when you look at um, Iran relation uh, with, with the outside world for the past 35 years, it speaks for itself. And when you look at uh, the Iraqi situation, which is technically, con uh, you know, for a long time controlled by by Iran, also speaks for itself. And uh, even 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 ISIS or Daesh, uh, it's uh, it's amazing that that no 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 Iranian interest had been attacked at the same time they declare Saudi Arabia as their number one enemy. But, uh, you know, I, as I said, I hope it doesn't, don't, things don't escalate. But, uh, as I, you know, look, look at the record and events or historical events for the past 35 years. It will tell you how, what, what Iran is doing inside, inside uh, the, the Gulf states and, and many, Arab, uh, many Arab countries. It's, it's very, very, very sad. All right. And, uh, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a reality. It's a reality. Okay, Hamid, very quickly, we're running out of time. What are the options for Iran right now and how they respond to this? Iran has always been following a, a policy of uh, lessening the tensions with other countries and de-escalating the tension in the country. And it has emphasized that it follows a good neighborliness uh, policy toward other countries. So it's not going to be happen to go toward a military option because Iran is uh, is not following the policy it's not do, do not want does not want to increase the tension iran is going to uh, decrease the tension and um, i hope that riyadh also, also acts as a rational player in the international arena and the, the situation should find a political solution in the future maybe